wanted it. And we read the Bible and we have the truth and we will be fine. There will be absolutely no confusion or guessing about it. Churches have been divided because they're not going closely to the Bible. I am very grateful that we have a pastor, Pastor Rick Warren, that stays very close to the Bible. He doesn't, he doesn't defend it. He doesn't argue about it. It's just, hey, that's what the Bible says. It's as simple as that. That's right. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for your support. I'm actually really liking you over there. <laughs> Church, brother, I wanted to go or not. My beloved late mother did not allow us to sit at home. I was made to go to church. Me too. My mama too. My mama too. So, Psalms 119, 104. Your commandments give you great understanding. It's no wonder I can see and hate every false way of life. A wise person is hungry for truth, while the fool feeds on trash. <laughs> that was Proverbs 15, 14. Your last one, number four, is choose believers as my best friends. Now I'm not saying only, you know, we need to go out and, and, and love everyone, but you're close, your root, the ones that are right by you. Choose them as your best friends. Do not be misled. Bad company correct, corrupts good character. 1 Corinthians 15, 13. What kind of a person do you want to be in 10 years? That's something you should ask yourself. A lot of us don't even think about that, do we? We just survive day by day. We don't, you know, just get through it, just get through the day, another thing to do. But how are we growing? What kind of person do we want to be in 10 years? Stay away from fools or you won't learn a thing. Proverbs 14, 7. So how are you selecting your friends? What's important to you? What would you like in a friend? These are the things you need to ask. Fools show their stupidity by the way they live. It's easy to see they have no sense. Ecclesiastics 10.3. So how do you know who's foolish? Again, read Proverbs. It's all in there. Every foolish act is in Proverbs. And I'm going to bring up Chris right now. Um, Let's hear it from my mom. Wow. You know, sometimes when you're challenged, sometimes when you're stressed, that's when God can use you the most, only if you rely on him for strength. And that's exactly what she did. Let's hear it from my mom again as she goes across the street. You know, there's a lot of effort now taking all of our food distribution and, and effort uh, over at the Civic Center, or I'm sorry, over at the courtyard. It's a lot of new planning. It's not easy, as easy as it was, but we want to be a team player. We want to be part of the effort that's going on here at the Civic Center that people like Eagle and Christian and a lot of you here are capitalizing on those efforts. So we want to work as a team, but it requires learning. It requires learning about what you need and what you want and how you can best be served here at the Civic Center. So, we know for a fact that God wants to teach us things. We know for a fact that even things besides, in addition to the Bible, God wants us to learn so we can be most effective as His children, as His salt and light, as His servants. So the whole point of this message is excelling in the education, which is life, without being corrupted by the environment that we're in. Does that make sense? Whether it be in school, whether it be here at the Civic Center, or the world, or the media, or whatever pressure that's being put on you to change and be somebody who God does not want you to be. How do you excel in your education and not lose your faith? My mom gave you the first four. The first one, let's say it together. Number one, decide in advance to stand for God. That's the first one. You got to decide in advance you're going to stand for God, regardless of what environment or where you travel to or what you do or what your goals are. You have to decide in advance to stand for God. That's the most important thing. Daniel did that. Number two, never stop learning. Never stop learning. That's called humility. It's called humility. Now, how do you know the difference? How do you know when you're tested with knowledge? Well, you take a test, right? Whether it be college or whatever, they're going to be tested, right? with their knowledge that they're learning. 
They're going to have a read a book and they have to do a Scantron or whatever. Sometimes it's a test, a, an oral test, where you're, you have to give a speech. You're tested on that. But how are you tested with wisdom? Does anybody know? How do you test it with wisdom? Well, there's many ways you can be tested with wisdom, but one way in particular is your relationships. How do you handle conflict in relationships? That's one of the ways you're tested in your wisdom. And a lot of people struggle with conflict. A lot of people struggle when somebody does them wrong. They don't know what to do. They run away or they lash out or they get retaliation or whatever. So relationships is one telltale sign on how much wisdom we have in our hearts. And God wants to teach us wisdom so we can be most effective in our relationships. But also stress is another thing. Circumstances. Life's normal life stressors. If you're not with, with wisdom, if you're not close to God, you're going to be have a very difficult time handling stress. If you run out of money, if you lose your job, if you lose a loved one, or if your car breaks down, or if you stub your toe, whatever, how you handle those situations, right? Little, little normal life stresses. That's another way are you tested with how much wisdom that you have. So that's the number two. The third one is steep myself in God's word. You know what that means, steep? Steep is, is, a, is a word. Uh, exactly. But you know, what? you have tea, a tea bag. That's what you're steeping the tea bag in water. It's not just going in one time and coming out. It's going in and out, or it's just staying in there. It's it, it's absorbing the, the content of the tea bag, and eventually the water becomes another color, the tea color, the brown color, right? And, or it could be green, just like green tea, whatever. So the point is, when you're steeping yourself in God's Word, you're not reading it on the run and say, okay, I know God's Word. You don't read it once a week or rely on it once a week here uh, in our services and expect that to be absorbed in you enough where you can actually uh, apply it and, 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 and God can use it and bring it out in certain situations. The steeping yourself in God's Word, meaning you're meditating on it day and night. You can take one verse, just one verse. Let's look at one of the verses. Let's look at the, 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 the Psalms 119-104. Your commandments give me great understanding. You can just do that one. Your commandments give me great understanding. Let's, let's, let's say it together. Your commandments give me great understanding. You keep, you keep ruminating on that. You keep meditating on that. You keep going over that over and over again instead of worrying about your problems, you meditate on that verse. Your commandments give me great understanding. There's a lesson right there. There's both knowledge and wisdom. Science has proven that when you do it God's way, when you actually have a relationship with God, you read His Bible, you absorb it, you steep on it, you meditate on it, you have strong faith. Science has already proven that our blood pressure goes down, that our heart rate is healthier, that our lives are healthier because we aren't stressing out all the time for everything that comes our way, right? It's already been proven. Science is simply catching up to God. And I like what the lady that was over there said, right? There's a lot of people that come here that are false prophets. Well, what does it say in the rest of Psalms 119? It says, it's no wonder I can see and hate every false way of life. You know what's true. You know what's not true. You can, you can tell the difference. But how can you tell the difference unless you know God's Word, unless you've steeped and meditated on God's Word? And then the fourth one my mom mentioned was, choose believers as my best friends. You know, they say, you are who you hang around with. Where do you think that comes from? It came from the Bible in 1 Corinthians 15.33. Do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. It corrupts, meaning it changes you. You're influenced by it. You are pressured to conform, as we talked about last week. So don't be misled. Choose your friends wisely. Now, God wants us to reach out to those that are non-believers. But our core friends, our core accountability are those that are walking, should be those that are walking with Christ. Because it's much easier to pull you up or pull you down than it is to pull you up. And you need those friends that are going to pull you up because there's a lot of people out there that want to pull you down. So you have to have a stronger force to help keep you on track. I, can, I can't tell you how much my friends have helped me with my sobriety and my recovery. If I didn't have them, I wouldn't be sober. I, I would be doing life on my own. And sometimes it's their example, it's their words that God is speaking through them that go right to my heart and help me to stay on course. 
Even if I relapse, I know that there's hope because God is always there and He will forgive me and He will help me. And for me, who's a very slow learner, God still loves me. And God still wants to grow me and teach me lessons. It doesn't matter how many times I've fallen. It matters how much time, how many times I get back up. And maybe that's what you needed to hear today. Maybe that's it. Maybe many of you here today have fallen. Maybe you've fallen hard. And you've fallen so many times that you don't even know how to get back up. Your muscles are too, too tired to get yourself back up. But maybe God wants to teach you something a little bit different this time. Maybe he wants to teach you to take his hand. To take his outstretched hand and let him pull you up this time. Can I get an amen on that? Amen. We talk about what God wants to teach us. That's an important lesson right there. God wants to teach us to grab his hand. To simply grab his hand. When we fall. When we lose a loved one. When something bad happens to us. God, thank you so much. That's it for these guys for giving me uh, for the... Oh, yeah, okay. It's for the equipment, too, yeah. <laughs> what I want you guys to do with the believers as friends, I want you to, uh, to make a plan, maybe Eagle or whatever, make a plan to, to eat with a fellow Christian at the Civic Center today. Begin to tell them about this message in particular and uh, challenge them to be more like Daniel in their daily walk. That's an action plan you can take them. Thank them for their personal witness to you and be sure and listen to what's going on in their life and be an encouragement to them. You know, one of the things I want, especially some of, some of you that are new believers, I want you to go up to people that have maybe been a believer that have no problem talking about their uh, faith and how they came to Christ. Steve is one of those people. You go up to him, he'd be more than happy to tell you his story and how he came to Christ. Eagle is one of them, right? Christian, who's not, I don't know where Christian is. He's another guy. Open arms. He'll tell you. No problem. And, and, and maybe that's something God wants to teach us. He wants us to learn from each other. It's not just the mistakes, but, but the moment when they converted and they became a believer. There was something powerful that happened in their life that may just resonate with you. And maybe that might be in and itself for them to step across that line of faith. Have, Come on up here. You want to say something? They, they need to hear you. There's one thing I say to a lot of people. You either stand for God or you fall for anything. Yeah. That's true. It's like the three little pigs analogy. What's your, what's your house made of? Is it made of brick or straw? Right? And if we don't have the Bible in us, we don't have that foundation, we'll fall for anything. Some of the big bad wolf will come and blow our house down. We'll fall for anything. Somebody can be charismatic and say something really cool and you like a motivational speaker or a self-help type of something and you'll just fall for it. That's how you live your life. And then this, this guy becomes your Messiah, right? That's not how God wants us to live. Number five. This is, where, this is the, now we're going to pick up where we left off. Number five. Stay connected to a church and a small group and a ministry. Fortunately for you, we have all three here. We have a church, which is what we're meeting right now. We have our small group, which is our Iron Men group and our Steadfast Sisters, right? It's a small, intimate group where you can share your hurts, habits, and hang-ups and confess things on a regular basis, on a weekly basis. And we have our ministry. We have a team of people that walked around and handed out stuff. We have a team of people that uh, helped set up. We're gonna need help tearing it down. So if you're here today, we're gonna need your help. Right? These guys came and they're, they're called them a ministry. They're serving the Civic Center here today. Let's hear it for them again, right? <laughs>